Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good all the time. Amen. Now, I've met some folks that's bad all the time, but God's good all the time. Amen. Aren't you glad God's good all the time? And uh, that's what he wants us to be good all the time, too. Maybe it ought to be be good all the time. Not so much good, but be good all the time. Amen. What an awesome, awesome blessing today to see someone come to the Lord Jesus. And the water baptism was tremendous. And just seeing some things happen, people give their heart to the Lord. And that's wonderful. That's the fruit of the Spirit of God. And I just thank the Lord for that. Amen. Um, I want you to open up your Bibles with me, please, to St. John chapter 14. Let's stand for the read of God's word. St. John chapter 14, verse 1 and verse 27. And just kind of watch my voice. If it goes to wane a little bit, pull me up a little bit and just kind of treat me like a little baby tonight. Make sure I'm okay. Amen. And I promise I won't goo-goo. I'll, I'll preach. Amen. But it's good to be in the house of the Lord. I about lost my voice, Brother Darrell, and that's bad. When a preacher loses its voice, that's like a rooster losing his head, his neck. Amen. But uh, I love these two verses of Scripture. Verse 1, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. And then verse 27, peace, Jesus Christ says, I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I want to use for a subject tonight, let not your heart be troubled. You may be seated. I want to talk to you tonight about some reasons why we should not let our heart be troubled. I believe that there is a reason for God's people to be courageous. There's a reason for God's people to have peace. There's a reason for God's people to be strong and to be able to face anything in life. And of course, someone would say, well, Jesus is the reason. Of course he is. But he gave us so many blessings to make us strong. And he did so many things that he gave us in order for us to let not our hearts be troubled. Um, before the, the sermon's done, I want you to be able to say not troubled. Not troubled, amen. And uh, that ought to be your attitude about life. Not troubled. I love the way he starts out, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. That's pretty good. We believe in God. But then Jesus Christ says, believe also in me. And so it's one thing to believe in God. It's another thing to trust the fact that God so loved the world that God touched down on planet earth in the person of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gives us courage, courageous power in our life and strength in our hearts. And so there's reasons why our heart should not be troubled. And I'll just share some of them reasons with you tonight. And I believe when you leave here tonight, you'll say, those are just pretty good reasons not to be troubled. I want to begin by saying there are some things that Jesus Christ took back with him to heaven. There are some things that Jesus Christ took back with him to heaven. Now, we know that Jesus Christ said, uh, if you believe in God, believe also me. And then he said, in my Father's house are many mansions. And he says that he's going to go prepare a place for us. And if he goes and prepares that place for us, he will come again and receive us unto himself. That where he is or where I am, Jesus Christ said, ye shall be also. And he says, I go to prepare a place for you. So when Jesus went to prepare a place for us, he took back with him spiritual material to make that place for us. Jesus Christ took some things back with him to heaven that we can say, praise God, not troubled. My heart is not troubled because Jesus took some things back with him that gives me security and gives me strength in my heart. 
Now let's look at some of those things for a moment. First of all, I want to say Jesus took our payment for sin back to heaven with him. Jesus took our payment for sin back to heaven with him. Have you stopped to consider it was the sinless body of Jesus Christ resurrected that went back to heaven? Have you stopped to think about that? There's a man in heaven that's like you and I, only without sin, without the sin of death, he's conquered the grave, and that man like you and I, his name is Jesus Christ. Now, he was without sin, so in that aspect we're nothing like him but in the aspect that he was like us and came and paid the ultimate price Jesus Christ went back to heaven and he took his sinless body back to heaven with him now let me say this right now when he went back to heaven with his sinless body he took it without blood. Why? Because the blood had already been offered on the mercy seat in heaven. And so when Jesus returned to heaven, he returned without blood in his body because his blood had already been sacrificed on, on Calvary, on Golgotha's hill. And that blood was put up on the mercy seat in heavenly places at that time. And so when Jesus went back to heaven, he, he went back to heaven with the payment for our sin. You see, it's not enough to pay for our sin on earth. We got to have our sin paid for in heaven because in heaven God said, the soul that sinneth shall surely die. It was God in heaven that said, the wages of sin is death. It was God in heaven that said that a man who sins will die without mercy, without any way out. He will be doomed to a devil's hell. But aren't you glad that Jesus Christ, our mercy seat, came to planet earth and Jesus Christ purchased us with the blood of God. And Jesus shed his blood on the cross of Calvary to pay for our sin. But it wasn't enough for him just to die on the cross. Jesus had to get up out of the grave and take that blood to heaven. And not only that, when he got up, got out of the grave and went to heaven, I'm getting excited, boy, I tell you what, when he got up and took that blood back to heaven, he, he spent 40 days with his, with his disciples and he, and he told them, that, hey, I'm risen from the grave. He, he spent 40 days together, together the scattered sheep back together. And then after 40 days, he, it, we call it the ascension. And he ascended back to the Father. And when he ascended back to the Father, he took a sinless blood body, a resurrected body. He took a body that had nail prints in his hands. He took a body that had a pierced side in his side. And what does those nail prints represent in his hand? Those nail prints represent forgiveness for sin. Forgiveness for sin. What does that pierced side represent? God's willingness to forgive us of our sin. What does the suffering of Jesus Christ, his body showed the signs of suffering even after he was glorified, even after he was risen again from the grave, his body still showed the signs of suffering. What was that suffering about? God suffers and is patient and is kind and wants to give us eternal life. That suffering of Jesus Christ is proof that God is patient and kind and desiring to give us eternal life. Jesus Christ stayed on that cross long enough to change our life for eternity. And Jesus Christ went to that grave long enough to raise us up alive for eternity. Woo! And so Jesus took some things back with him to heaven. A sinless body, a perfect record, a sinless life in which he lived for God. He took back our payment for our sin. That's incredible. He took back the nail prints in his hands. He took back to heaven with him his wounded side. And he took back to heaven with him his beaten body. Yet that body is glorified and resurrected because he was without sin, and God, his father, raised him from the dead, according to Romans 10, 9, and 10. Now, not only did Jesus go back to heaven with the body that died for our sins, sinless and pure, but Jesus Christ went back with him, or went back to heaven to be with his father with intercession. 
The Hebrew writer says he went into the heaven itself. Just like the tabernacle in the Old Testament was a picture of, of the heavenly tabernacle in heaven, Jesus Christ went back to heaven and when he went back to heaven, he went back with him with intercession. Hebrews 9, 24 says, he went into the heaven itself. Now, Jesus Christ now to appear in the presence of God for us. And so Jesus went back not only with a sacrifice body that died, this blood was taken to the throne room of God, Jesus Christ rose again from the grave, but Jesus went back to heaven with a cry for our forgiveness. Now he made that cry on the cross of Calvary, but he's gonna take that same cry he made on the Calvary, Father forgive them, they don't know what to do, and he's gonna take that same beckoning cry into heaven itself. He's going to take intercession to his father. Now, I don't know about you, but that makes me very excited that Jesus Christ went to heaven, went to the Holy Father of God. I mean, God Almighty, Jesus Christ went there to make intercession for you and I. He went there with a good argument. Are you listening to me? Jesus Christ went there with a good argument. The father might have said, give me one good reason why I shouldn't throw them all in hell. And Jesus stood before him and said, look at me. Look at me. And I believe the father brushed the tears away from his eyes and his cheeks. And he said, my God, that's a good enough reason. Justice was satisfied. And so he took back with him intercession, meaning a cry to God that we would be forgiven. It was um, a good argument. How I many know that when Jesus went back to heaven, he had a good argument. He, he had an argument that was indisputable with his father. When he went to heaven, he sent his blood ahead, the earnest of our forgiveness. He sent the blood ahead, and then he arrived later without the blood in his body. In the glorified body, he shed his blood, he sent the blood ahead to the throne room of God on the mercy seat, and then later he goes to be with his father, 40 days later to be exact, and he ascends back to his father, and he goes there in a sinless, perfect body that was like ours, only like us, but not with sin. And he sat down at the right hand of God the Father. And he says, and now, for some intercession. And now he went into the heaven itself, sit down, and now he's in the presence of God make an intercession for you and I. That's some of them things he took. No wonder we can say, not troubled. Hello. Not troubled. And, and I just want you to grasp this because this is very important that you grasp what I'm about to say. Not only did he take a sinless body that had died on the cross of Calvary, shed his blood, the blood of God, and was taken to heaven, and he took a intercession, and an indisputable, undeniable argument that he took to the Father, saying, Father, look what I've done. Now, the Father knew what he did. The Father sent him to do what he did. But the Father still was waiting for his son to arrive so that you and I could get the clear clarification, justified, and we are not justified on earth, we are justified in heaven. We're forgiven here on earth, we are uh, adopted here on earth, we are given forgiveness on earth, adoption, the blessing of God on earth, but, but you know, when I got born again, 
That, that forgiveness happened in my heart. That regeneration happened in my heart. But that justification happened in God the Father's heart. When Jesus went to heaven with the argument, I paid the sin debt, I took the curse of the law, I paid the debt, I, the wages of sin is death, yes, Father, and I paid it. Hmm. Hello. Now, this is not deep preaching, but it is stout. But it takes some stout preaching to get it through our bull head that we can really be forgiven. Amen? Anybody ever met someone bullheaded? Anybody? Don't look at that one you beside. Anybody ever met anybody bullheaded? Hey, yeah. They might, as well be a, they might as well have a block of wood on their shoulders. They are so bullheaded, stubborn, bullheaded. But I want you to know that Jesus Christ paid in full our sin debt. So he went back to heaven with our payment for sin, the wages of sin. And he went back to heaven with intercession. You say, what's that got to do? I go to prepare a place for you, Jesus Christ said. That's what he's talking about. He's preparing a place for us. You say, oh, man, I want a mansion in heaven. You'll get it. Settle down. Oh, preacher, you mean we're not going to have a mansion in heaven? Yes, we will. Settle down. Chill out. But we'll never move into that mansion until first we have a place at the right hand of God in the person of Jesus Christ. We must have a place. That's why the Hebrew writer said, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. That's why the Bible says that having uh, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of the Lamb or by the blood of God, by the blood of Jesus Christ, the Hebrew writer says. And so Jesus made a place for us. A happy place, yes. That sounds almost too McDonald's. A happy place. A a. A place where God, a forgiven place, a place for eternity, a place to be, a place to be encouraged. Are you listening? Come on, this sermon won't last near as long if you'll just nod your head and say amen. Because, you know, it's kind of like one of them things that you know they're not listening, so you're going to talk until they do. That means a long, long, long sermon. But Jesus Christ took with him intercession. He took with him uh, our, our, the payment for our sin. He took with him, not only that, Jesus Christ took back with him to heaven a promise that he would return. So when Jesus Christ left planet earth, he said, I will be back. Hello? So you don't find that in the Bible. I don't. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. Yeah. It's in the Bible. And not only is it in the Bible, he's coming back. It's in the Bible that he went to make us a place. Can you say not troubled? Not troubled. Because God's working on my and your behalf, we, sh we need to not be troubled. He's working on our behalf. Oh, well, I'll mess it up. Don't you know God knew you'd do that? Hello? Don't you know God knew that you would mess it up? Sure you would. So that's why God didn't let you save yourself. Hello? That's why God didn't put salvation in your hands. He put it in the hands of Jesus Christ. And he, said, and he went back to heaven with the promise, I will be back. Isn't that beautiful? So we're looking at some things that Jesus Christ took with him to heaven. Now, let's look at some things that Jesus Christ did for us here on earth. Now, there's many things he did. There's many things he's doing now. But let us look at three things that he did for us 
And of course, there's more than that. There's the peace and there's the joy and etc. But let's look at this. Uh, not trouble because God has made us a way home. Not trouble because God has made us a way home. He said, I go prepare a place for you. If I go to prepare a place, and he did, he said, I'm going to come back. And receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may, there you may be also. So he says, I'm going to prepare a place. And so Jesus Christ made us a way home. Aren't you glad we have a way home? And in the sixth verse, verse 6 of, of John 14, Jesus Christ, Thomas said, how do we know the way? How can you, we know the way? How can we know the Father, etc., etc., etc.? And Jesus Christ uh, said, Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, no man's going to get there except by me. No man comes to the Father except by me. Hello. And so let's look at those three things. I am the truth. Now, let's just stop and think. It, I, it, he says way first, but let's look at the truth. How many know Jesus Christ brought us some truth? And he still gives us truth. Hello. This is not only the church house, this is a truth house. This is not just a house of God, this is a house of truth. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. Jesus Christ brought us truth. The truth about God. The truth about heaven. The truth about how to go home. The truth about how to get off planet earth alive. The truth about being born again. The truth about being changed by the spirit of God. The truth about the spirit of God and the life of God. And Jesus Christ says, I'm not only giving you truth, I'm gonna give you a way. And he said, I am the way. Jesus Christ gave us a way. I love that. He, he, he came and brought us truth. He came and brought us a way off planet earth. He came to make us a way. Let me know Jesus made us a way. Not only did he come and bring us truth and make us a way, but he brought life to you and I that cannot die. I, 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 my voice got kind of weak this morning, but whoa! He came to bring us life that will not, cannot, shall not, never die. Amen. Now that's good news. That's good news to anyone that has had to go to the graveyard. That's good news to anyone that's had to face a loved one going out into eternity. That's good news that Jesus Christ brought to us life that will not die. And let me tell you how to not die. Get Jesus in you. He can't die. He won't die. And if you've got Jesus in you, you can't die and you won't die. Your body may flake out, but you will continue to live because Jesus has got a hold of you. Jesus has got a hold of you. Hello. I'm glad Jesus has a hold of me. I'm glad tonight that Jesus has a hold of you. He does. He has holy. See, it's not so much you holding on to God. I hear preachers all the time. Oh, brother, you better hold on to God. If you don't hold on to God, you're going to hell. Well, I'm not against you holding on to God, but I'm more for the fact that God holds on to me. If I walk one of those grandchildren across the road, I guarantee you I'm not going to leave it to that little grandson to hold on to me. I'm going to hold on to him. Hello? I mean, I won't even let Judy cross the road without me holding on to her. I make sure I hold on to Judy when she crosses the road. Because she'll, she'll get sidetracked and get to thinking about some drill or press or some saw at Lowe's. And she'll forget. And she'll forget that she's not in Lowe's. She's in the middle of a highway. If I ever can't find Judy, I just go to Lowe's. That's where she'll be. It ain't Walmart, it's Lowe's. 
I like that. I like the fact that I got a woman that can build things. I like the fact that I've got a woman that can fix things. I like the fact that I got a woman that can sand things, nail things, build things, because I don't like to do anything. <laughs> and I'm not even going to try to learn. <laughs> oh, preacher, preacher, don't you feel humiliated? No, I feel extremely blessed. Oh, I just couldn't live like that. Try it. Find somebody else to do your work. It's awesome. <laughs> now, she's not going to get after me after service because she knows what I'm saying is the truth. Well, exaggerated truth in some area. But Jesus Christ, he made a life for us. He gave a life so that we could have a life. Jesus Christ gave his life so we can have a life, and we have a life in our heart that will, and, and Jesus hangs on to us. And the Bible says if we hear his voice, a stranger we will not follow if we know his voice, and we'll come to him, and Jesus Christ said, and I shall give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish what the Bible says. Amen. 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 Not only did Jesus make us a way home, could you say not troubled? Not troubled. Not troubled because of what Jesus took to heaven. Not troubled because of what Jesus made a way for us to go home, to go to heaven. Not trouble because Jesus Christ said he'd come back. But number three, not trouble because we have the wonderful privilege of prayer. We have the wonderful privilege of prayer. We can ask God for things. We can ask God to do things in our life. We can ask God for wonderful things, but you know what? It's just really super wonderful, awesome, incredible, amazing, spectacular, just to talk to the one that's coming back for us. Amen. And so we do have the wonderful privilege of prayer. Prayer is a sin killer. Hello. Prayer is a stain remover. Prayer is a fresh blessing. Amen. So where do you get that in the Bible? Verse 13 of John 14. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Isn't that awesome? Let me show you something else that we don't have to be troubled about. Not, everybody shout, not troubled. Now, if you're troubled, don't be lying. You can say one of the two things, not troubled or I'm worried. We hope you're saying not troubled. I hear people all the time saying, I'm so worried, I'm so troubled. Quit that nonsense. You're bigger and better than that. Not troubled because God's powerful spirit has come to you and I. Not trouble because God's powerful spirit has come to you and I. You say, where's that in the Bible? Right here. John 14, verse 16 and 17. And Jesus Christ said, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. That word another means another one just like myself, Jesus says a comforter, that he may abide with you forever. That's the Holy Ghost. That's the Spirit of God. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. The world cannot receive the Holy Ghost. The world cannot receive the Spirit of God because it seeth him not. It doesn't under, the world doesn't understand you and I. Shoot, we barely understand each other, but the world doesn't understand you and I. But God does, and the Spirit of God does. Amen? He said, they don't understand. The world cannot receive because it seeth him not. Speaking of the Holy Ghost. Neither knoweth him. They don't see him and they don't know him. But ye know him, 
for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Now get the picture here. He's talking to his disciples. Jesus has not died yet. Jesus is getting ready to go to Golgotha's hill. He's getting ready to die. Jesus is their Holy Ghost at that moment. And he tells his disciples, I'm leaving. I'm going away, but I'll be back. And when I go, I'll be back. I'm going to prepare a place for you. But you understand that when I'm gone, I'm going to send you another. That another means one just like Jesus. Jesus, the Holy Ghost. And he said, right now, he is with you. He's speaking to his disciples. The Holy Spirit is with you. The Holy Ghost is with you. But he shall be in you. Mm, 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 mm. And I'm glad I've got him in me. I said, I'm glad I got him in me. Said, oh, preacher, wouldn't you like to walk with Jesus on the Galilee? Wouldn't you on the Sea of Galilee? Uh, well, I have to say it's pretty tempting to walk on the water with Jesus. But anyway, uh, wouldn't you like to walk with Jesus on the uh, Galilee shore? Wouldn't you like to walk with Jesus on the streets of, uh, uh, of, uh, of Jerusalem? Well, you know what? I think I, I just feel in my soul that I'd rather walk with him on the streets of gold. And I just want to say this right now. Peter, James, and John, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and all the, Andrew, and all those, they ain't got anything better than we do. They walked with him, with him. He walks in us, and we walk in him. Amen. We're closer to Jesus than Peter was. Because Jesus walked with Peter. Jesus walked with, with James and John. But after Jesus arose from the grave, he moved inside of us. And you don't get closer than him being inside you. That's as close as you can get. Now, did Peter have Jesus move in? Of course he did. He said, and he shall be in you. But if you were giving me a choice... Would you like to walk the streets of Jerusalem, the streets of Jericho with Jesus Christ? I've already got something better than that. Now, who wouldn't want to walk with Jesus? That's, that's, I mean, that's, a, that, that's just a, a given. Anyone would want to walk with Jesus. But listen to me. Right now, we do walk with Jesus. Right now, we see Jesus. And that's why Jesus said to Thomas in John 20... Thomas, because you've seen, thou hast believed. But blessed are they that have not seen, yet they have believed. Remember Thomas fell to his knees and said, my Lord and my God. Well, I don't, you know what? I'll fall to my knees and say, Jesus, my Lord and my God. And the truth is, I haven't seen the actual print of nails. I haven't seen the actual pierced eye. But why should I have to see him? He's living inside of me. He's just as real to me as he was to them. Isn't that good? And so the Spirit of God has come to us, and, and everybody in this room ought to say, not troubled. Not troubled. Now we come to the last one I want to bring out. Not troubled because of the down deep peace we have in Jesus. The down deep bedrock peace we have in Jesus. John 14, verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, but give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Now, I don't know about you. I, I, I trust you're just as more so spiritual than I am. I want you to know that if Jesus gives us the peace and the world didn't give it to us, then the world cannot take it away from us. 
Hello? You say, preacher, hadn't you ever worried? Hadn't you ever felt? Well, I got to be honest. Of course I have. I mean, it wasn't a bed of roses when I went through my wreck or when I've been sick and going through. Of course I've been in a place where my faith was tested and it was rocking his heart. I'm not trying to be super saint in this room. But I am telling you that if you'll focus on the risen Lord, if you'll focus on God, even in the midst of your doubt and even in the midst of your trouble, you can have peace inside. There may not be peace all around you, but there can be a deep peace in your heart. Isn't that good? A deep peace in your heart. And so that gives great meaning to me. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. I think everyone in this room believes in God. And Jesus Christ said, not only believe in God, he said, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. There's a Bible translation that says, in my Father's house are many rooms. I don't believe that for a second. I don't think God's so poor that he only has rooms for us. I believe there's mansions, not rooms. I'm not moving into a room. Forget it. I am not moving into a room next door to Don. Forget it. I am not moving into a room next door to Dan. Not going to. Now, I love Dan, care for Dan, but I just don't have a great desire to live with him. And Dan says, that's right, I'd kill you. A mansion sounds better, doesn't it? And he said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I go to prepare a place for you. I love that phrase, if it were not so, I would have told you. That makes a great big heaven for me. If it were not so, I would have told you. That may, there's a lot of things Jesus hasn't told me. Like instead of the DQ, it will be the HQ. Dairy Queen, DQ, HQ. There'll be an HQ. You can have a banana split, no calories. <laughs> nobody that's going to get messed up. I was going to say nobody gets fat, but when we all get to heaven, we may all be fat. I don't know. There's a lot of things Jesus hadn't told me. Someone asked me, well, do you think dogs go to heaven? Well, some of them ain't going to heaven. I can tell you that right now on the behavior that lists of God. So, well, there's nothing in the Bible that says dogs go to heaven. Well, the Bible says the city, the, the dogs will be without the city. But I just want to say, some, you know, he didn't tell me this, but I kind of think my favorite dog that I had, I had a dog named Blackie. And Blackie was white. <laughs> My favorite dog. You've heard of coon dogs. You've heard of rabbit dogs. You've heard of squirrel dogs. My dog was a turtle dog. <laughs> and as a little boy, I'd chase my dog because he was a turtle dog. One day, that, that dog grounded over 60 turtles. I, you thought I was going to say tree. I'm not that stupid. <laughs> but he found over 60 turtles. I remember when we brought him home, over 60 turtles. I think it was 68, 69 turtles. I wouldn't have had him if it wasn't for my dog. Well, for some reason, I think that dog will be in heaven with me. Because who knows? We may want to go turtle hunting. Now you say, that's ridiculous. It may be, but I just want you to listen to me. Don't rule out the fact that God will take some of the most cherished memories in your life, some of the most beautiful things in your life, and God will let you relive them and enjoy them. I believe that. Now, you say, preacher, you're all wrong. Well, I, I guess I could be, but don't correct me. It sounds good to me anyway. Hello? And so I just want to say that 
He says, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you at, unto myself that where I am, there you may, you may be also. And I believe he's coming soon. I believe he's coming soon. Don't feel bad, Caleb. They acted that way this morning. Stand with me. I don't think he, you know, we, we all got to say for our grandkids, they don't feel good. He's probably sleepy. Most of you are in this room right now. I hope I shared some things with you that you could say, not troubled. Not troubled. You know, I'm going to say this. April's not here, but I want to say that when it was time for Terry to leave, he was not troubled. He was not troubled. He left like a champ. He left like a champion. He was not troubled. And I miss him. I miss a lot of people, and I miss him. Miss his singing. Miss him being in the house of the Lord with us. But when he left, he was not troubled. And I want you to know, he sure ain't troubled now. And we ought to take great courage in the fact that God has told us, let not your heart be troubled. Amen. We're going to give the altar call. I want to invite you to come. Hope the message has helped you. Hope that it's strengthened you a little bit. Lord, to help you. You come.